everyone and welcome to Craft Queen Juju. This is the first video on my channel where I'm going to be doing some cozy crafting and documenting my art projects. I hope you'll join me as I dive into all different types of crafts and maybe you can follow along and make some of your own. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Today we're going to be making a bookshelf hanging quilt. This is a small decorative piece that looks like book spines on a shelf. It's beginner friendly if you're new to quilting like I am and super customizable. I kept seeing patterns for these online and they were just so adorable I had to make one. So after a bit of rummaging around Pinterest, I found a free pattern that I'll link below if you want to use it to follow along and make your own quilt. I'm using this pattern as a starting off point, but I'm going to improvise some of the dimensions and layout. I got to drafting my hodgepodge pattern and decided to do six books of varying size, all sitting in one shelf. I'm gonna pick out some books to replicate and add text and other details to the spines to make them look real. I'll probably use a mix of embroidery, paint, and maybe iron-on fabric for this, but you can really do whatever you want here. The first step once you have a mock pattern is picking out your books. You don't actually have to use real books or put text on your quilt at all. I just really like the idea of recreating some of my favorites. For my six books, I chose Dune by Frank Herbert, Vampires in the Lemon Grove by Karen Russell, Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler, and Bright Dead Things by Ada Lamone. These are some of my favorite books and the cover art is going to be so fun to make. Now that I have my lineup, I need to get some fabric to match. Now that we have our supplies, it's time to start the books. First, I'm making Dune, the iconic space opera. For its quilted likeness, I decided to stick pretty close to my reference. I went with hand embroidery. To keep the real book proportions, I traced the cover and then pinned the tracing paper to my fabric. I also had to spray adhere the fabric to this stabilizer since I cut it before putting it in the hoop. It doesn't even look like I ironed it, which I don't recommend, but luckily it was easy to embroider. Now that that's done, I removed the shrapnel of the tracing paper. There was probably an easier way to do this, but it all worked out. Lastly, I added the stars. And this is the finished piece. Now for book two. The second book I did was Annihilation, another great sci-fi, highly recommend if you're a fan of the genre. For the quilted cover, I used a combination of stencil, embroidery, and paint. I traced the text and printed it out on cardstock paper so it would have a little more rigidity. I then used an X-Acto knife to cut out the stencil. And I used acrylic paint to stamp the title onto my fabric. The paint bled a little, so it was a bit sloppy, but I decided to stick with my third attempt before my paper dissolved too much. <laughs> 
After that dried, I added the little plant-like tentacles that wrap around the text. So I sketched them out and then hand embroidered them on. And for a final touch, I painted in the lines of the embroidery to add some contrast. And this is the final result. Now for book three. Next is Cloud Atlas. I guess the genre is science fantasy. For our quilt version, I used machine embroidery. I don't have an embroidery machine myself, but luckily my local library has a makerspace with a Brother SE400. I used a free software called Inkscape where you can create or upload embroidery designs. I tried to match the text, size it, and then upload it directly to the embroidery machine. The machine was a little wonky, so some of the stitch work is a little tangled. Overall though, I am so happy with how it turned out, it is much quicker than hand embroidery. I did some miscalculations on the spacing here, so I had to switch the order of the author and the title, but it was no big deal. And back at home, I cut the fabric, sewed over the edges of the title block, and then sewed that onto the book spine fabric piece. And book three is done. Now for book four. Parable of the Sower is next, an iconic dystopian sci-fi. For the quilt book, I used a combination of machine and hand embroidery. Back at the library, I uploaded the book text and let the machine do the work. I think it turns out great. At home, I cleaned up the loose threads and then sketched out the profile image that's centered on the book spine. I did my best hand embroidering it, not a perfect replica, but when I cut all the pieces and pinned them together, it looked the part. And book four is done. Now for book five. I made Vampires in the Lemon Grove next, a wonderful collection of short stories. I don't own a physical copy of the book, and a reference was hard to come by, so I took some artistic liberties on this one. The library machine once again saved me hours of hand embroidery, it turned out really clean. I originally embroidered it on blue and yellow fabric, but the yellow was too overbearing when I put the books together, so I decided to paint it green instead. I then sewed it together and hand stitched a yellow border. And now for the last book. This one was really straightforward. Bright Dead Things is an amazing poetry book and the spine is very simple. I mapped it out on the library embroidery machine and used these gorgeous metallic threads for the title and author. It needed a little cleaning up at home, but I cut it out and sewed it together. And I was finally done with all our books. For the final assembly, I took my backing fabric, cut it to height, and measured each book spine onto it. I cut out strips the same width as each book, and cut the height so that everything would line up when they were placed next to each other. I sewed the strips together vertically and then sewed the books next to each other so they all lined up at the bottom. And yes, I pressed my seams. The sixth book is a little more tricky since it's going to sit at an angle leaning up against the others. I ended up using three different triangle pieces that I measured out by tracing the book and adding a seam allowance around it. This is what it looked like put together. Finally, they're all lined up and in one piece. It's really coming together and all I need to do is add a shelf border and the quilt binding. I picked out this wood grain fabric for the border since it looks like an actual shelf, 
I cut out four pieces and sewed them around the edges. I trimmed them down a bit afterwards, you can make this any width you want. The final step is quilting it all together. I'm doing a self-bound quilt where I use the backing fabric to create the finished edge around the piece. I laid out my backing, cotton batting, and top of the quilt. I cut the batting to size and made sure to leave a 2 inch allowance on the backing all around. Then the binding is simple. You just fold it to the edge and then fold it over itself. I pinned everything up, sewed it all together. And here is the final result. Thanks so much for crafting with me. I had so much fun making this project and I hope you'll join me next time.